Good morning. What a privilege to share the word of God with you this morning. I trust you and your family are keeping well. Difficult times for us. And it's my heart's desire that during this time you would, you would benefit from your relationship with Jesus. It's, it's, it's a useless exercise to burn energy to wish our government away. It's a, it's a useless exercise to sit in our house like a steam train building up steam. Um, I sat with somebody yesterday that is really angry at what's going on in our country. And, and, and his cry to me was, Corne, I can't any longer. And I, and I had to, by Holy Spirit's help, I had to diffuse the things that were boiling in his heart. And I want to say to you this morning, I want to share a word this morning that to help you elevate you and lift you out of anything that the devil is putting upon you and your family. May the Lord bless us this morning. Father, thank you for your word. We love your word because you have invested your energy, your life, your power, your authority in your word. Thank you for your word this morning, Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, my, my theme for the next week or two would be growth is a challenge. Growth is a challenge. And I want to share with you from Hebrews chapter 5. You see, we've parked now for five weeks at the reality of emotional baggage, the reality of emotional healing. Um, we've talked about Father as our as a God, as our Father. We've talked about the reality of the healing that brings to our spirit man and to our emotional man. But I, I, want to, I want to move on with you and I want to challenge you to growth. So in Hebrews chapter 5, we read uh, from verse 12, he says, actually in verse 11, he, uh, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Uh, the writer to the Hebrews says this, Concerning this, we have much to say, which is hard to explain. And, and the, the author to the Hebrews is, is busy with a teaching. He wants to lift Jesus up and explain to them the priesthood of Jesus. Now he's saying, I can't do this with you. I can't move on. Um, since you have become dull in your spiritual hearing and sluggish, even slothful in achieving spiritual insight, you've become dull of hearing. In other words, whatever I have to share with you, the new precepts and concepts I wanna share with you, you're not gonna hear anyway. And then he makes this statement. This is the expectation of growth. Listen to this, verse 12. For even though by this time you ought to have been teachers, you actually need someone to teach you over again the very first principles of God and God's word. You have need of milk, baby food, and not solid food. I can't give you a T-bone. I actually have to get back to neutro and little baby foods so here's my my vantage point my start my point number one the first principle of life the first principle of life any living organism there's an expectancy to 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 look out for growth there's an expectancy for growth um, when a baby is born there's an expectancy for growth if I buy a little kitten uh, man, aren't they cute? Baby kittens to me are the cutest kittens. But, but they don't stay little. They don't remain there. They move on. And so here's the challenge that the author to the Hebrews put to us. By this time, there's been a time lapse since the day you gave your life to Jesus up to now. And I have expected more of you. I have expected growth from you. Come, let me tell you a story. When I was six years old, we lived, uh, our house was situated as the second house from the corner. And on the corner, a family by the, by the surname of Prenitz lived, Uncle Joe Prenitz. And Uncle Joe had a daughter that became my very, very best friend. I'm six years old. Patsy is 36 years old. And Patsy, we, I later learned, had Malta fever. And so 
I spoke to a neurosurgeon to explain to me what happened. And, and with this uh, drinking of unpasteurized milk, uh, it can cause a, a disease, a fever, that can start blocking the arteries of the brain. And so Patsy's brain development was stinted and she remained a three, four, five, six year old child with a 36 year old body. I remember her dad buying her little cars and trains and tractors and my, my parents bought me. And so we would sit in the garden on the ground and we would make little pathways and little lands that she could plow with her tractor and we uh, drove our little trains and, and buses. My best friend and her parents had such a disappointment because the expectancy was that Patsy would be a 36 year old woman. But she was a six year old woman trapped in a 36 year old body. You see, my point number two is growth is an ability far greater than self effort. If I can explain it to you this, like this, a peach tree doesn't stand there in the board, uh, in the garden, and, and, he, and, he, and he wishes or he forces himself to grow and he says, mm, I'm growing, I'm going to produce peaches. No, it's, it's not self-effort. There's a process as an ability. And I want to read to you from 2 Timothy chapter 1, uh, Paul's writing in verse 6. I would remind you, and he's speaking to the church, he's speaking to Timothy, but he's speaking through Timothy to us this morning. I would remind you to stir up, rekindle the embers, fan the flame of the fire of the gracious gift of God that, that was deposited in your life. The inner fire that is in you by means of me laying on my hands on you. You see, Timothy, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, but he has given us a spirit of power, dynamite and love and of a calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. So Paul is saying, you received by my laying on of hands on you in front of the church, you received a gift, you received a, dis, uh, a deposit of godly ability. And the challenge is, Timothy, you need to stir that up. You can't let it go placid and, 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 and just carry on with your life. Boy, you've become somebody new. You've become the dwelling place of the Most High God. But you have to stir. It's like a, a fanning into flame of a fire. You have the ability to be host to a godly ability. Point number three I want to share with you this morning. My own spirit transformation. Let me show you in Paul's theology. He says, I need to understand the difference between the natural man and the spiritual man or the flesh man and the spirit man. So let me read to you from 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14. But the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or embrace or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings of the Holy Spirit. You see, that old man, that unrenewed, the man that has not been born again, he, he doesn't have a spirit capacity. So he doesn't embrace, he doesn't welcome or admit into his heart the gifts he calls them folly and meaningless nonsense. So here is the clearest difference between natural man and a spiritual man. The natural man doesn't understand. He cannot grasp the things of the spirit. And so Paul goes on to talk about the spirit man and the flesh man. And I want to start off by, he's got a brilliant teaching in Galatians 5. I want to start off by showing you just the terribleness of the flesh man. In Galatians 5, 19, Paul writes the following. He says, now the doings or practices of the flesh are clear. They're obvious. They're evident. Everybody can see them. They are the following. They are immorality, impurity, 
indecency. This all has to do with a foul spirit, a foul way of living. It's all got to do with sexual deviance. Then verse 20, idolatry. This has got to do with where I worship. What do I worship? Idolatry, sorcery. Now, if we can just park for a second at the word sorcery, it's got nothing to do with that lady flying around on a broom. Sorcery here is the word pharmaceutical, which refers to pharmaceutica. It has to do with medicines. It has to do with drugs. He says there's a, there's a sorcery that's going on when you use drugs. There's a mind alteration. When I take nicotine, it alters my state of mind. When I take, al take alcohol, it alters the state of mind. When I take drugs, it alters my state of mind. So he calls it sorcery. Enmity, strife. This is to do with relationships, jealousy, anger, or an ill temper. Selfishness. I, me, my. I need this. I need this. I need this. It's like little baby just crying for his own wants and needs. Divisions. Parties or dissensions, a party spirit, factions, sects with peculiar opinions, heresies, envy, drunkenness. This has to do with a yielding to foreign substances, drunkenness, carousing, eating too much, partying too much, and such like. He says, I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice, who live on this level of life, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Immediately upon sharing this with a few brothers the other day, the one brother asked the question, this reference to inheriting the kingdom of life, does it mean a person that still could practice one of these things will not go to heaven? Beloved, we have in the church, we've developed a, a, a we overstressed the, the heaven concept. We're going to die. We're going to go to heaven. Or we're going to get raptured and we're going to go to heaven. God made us to dwell on earth and make a change here. So now I say, Paul is saying, I shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Let me say to you, if you live in jealousy, the kingdom of heaven demands of you to pray for that person. But man, that person's got a nicer car. I'm jealous of that person. How will I be able to operate in the spirit and yield to the spirit? In other words, the kingdom of Jesus, the reign of Jesus cannot be evident in my life if I allow the practices of the flesh. If I involve myself in enmity and I'm using drugs to feel better, how can I allow Holy Spirit to make me feel like a son of God? If I have idolatry in my life, if I uh, worship my uh, sport uh, achievements, my academic achievements, if I have all these things as idols in my life, how do I get to the place where I just simply worship Jesus? So what he's saying is, I will not inherit the kingdom of God. I will not manifest right now in my life now, the, the kingdom, the, the reign of Jesus. Dwight Moody uh, a, a brilliant spiritual author once told the story of an eagle that had, was envious of another eagle. The other eagle had the capacity or the ability to fly higher than him. And so he, he started brooding on this and he started developing this jealousy inside of him. One day this eagle saw a sportsman with a bow and arrow and he, and he landed on his shoulder and he said to him, I wish you would bring down that eagle up there. I, I bet you can't even reach that high and you can't shoot that eagle. So uh, on, to which the sportsman replied, I could if I had a feather from you to stabilize my arrow. So without further ado, the eagle pulled out uh, one of his wing feathers handed it over to the huntsman. He put it in his arrow and he shot and it was, he couldn't shoot high enough. So abruptly the eagle pulled out another and another and another and he tried to shoot and he just couldn't, the eagle was just out of his reach. 
It ended, ended up with an eagle sitting on the floor with no feathers left. And he was helpless. He couldn't fly himself. You see, the flesh kills me. The flesh destroys my capacity for life, my ability to be a son or a daughter of God. And so the huntsman killed this eagle. And so in the process of indulging in the ways of the flesh, I die. And, and I might not necessarily die physically, but I die spiritually. And so Paul comes with a challenge to live in the spirit. He, he calls it life in the spirit, my new life, my new ability. And, and uh, when we finish reading the works of the flesh, don't stop reading because here is the mirror that Paul wants to hold up before us to show us my new ability as a son or a daughter of God. Galatians 5.22 but the fruit or the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the work which His presence within me accomplishes, is love, joy or gladness, peace, patience, or an even temper, forbearance, kindness, goodness, or benevolence, faithfulness. My house, if I look up here now into my kitchen, I see all sorts of bags of potatoes and food standing around here because Holy Spirit has brought us to a place of benevolence where we share what we have with people in need. Faithfulness is the last one. Gentleness, verse 23, which is meekness or humility, self-control, self-restraint, continence. I'm, I'm, I'm in control of my life. My passions don't run wild with me. Against such thing there is no law. Verse 24. And those that belong to Christ Jesus, the Messiah, have crucified the flesh, the godless human nature, with its passions and appetites and desires. So Paul says, in my yielding to Holy Spirit, I leave that quality or that standard of life behind. I want to end off this morning's discussion with you. I learn to yield and surrender. The five weeks, five pa past five weeks, we have talked about emotional healing and, and the, the practice of walking in the Spirit and allowing my, my memories to be healed by Holy Spirit. We've learned about God as our Father and we've learned about yielding to Him and, and, and moving into this beautiful Father-Son relationship and where I can trust him and where he is my, my dad. But we move on. I want to challenge you with personal growth. I want to say to you that the, the desire of our Father is that we should move on and each one of us leave our baby clothes behind, leave our baby toys behind, our baby attitudes and Paul comes to the church in Rome and he writes in Romans six thirteen, Do not continue offering or yielding your bodily members and your faculties to sin as instruments or tools of wickedness. See, I have a choice. Will I yield myself to this old way of life or will I yield myself to Holy Spirit? But offer and yield yourselves to God as though you have been raised from the dead. You're a new man. When you gave your life to Jesus, you were rescued from a way of death to life. You are raised from dead to perpetual life. And your bodily members, my faculties, yield them to God, presenting them as implements of righteousness. With this body, I don't serve my old nature. With this body, I serve the, the, the dictates, the charges, the challenges of Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Let's come to a place of yieldedness this morning. Surrender. Say after me, say, Holy, Holy Spirit. I trust you, Lord. I trust you want to accomplish 
a Jesus kind of life in me and through me. I'm sorry for allowing old things to dictate thoughts and actions in my life. Come and make me strong, O oh God, I yield to you. Come and make me strong, Holy Spirit. I yield to you to accomplish and to manifest the life of Jesus in me and through me. Take me on this journey, I ask you in Jesus' name. Amen.